this is my cat. He likes to seek my attention. He usually doesn't like me when I hold him like this. Okay, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> So today I want to share with you some tips that can make your basic animation look more sleeker without compromising much of your time. So the first one is wiggle text. Now this might not work with all projects, but if your project is stuff like lyric videos maybe, you can definitely use this. Once you type in your text, all you need to do is to open your text layer and go to animate here. Start with position first. If you see here animator 1 next to it is add, if you click on the arrow next to add and then you go to selector and select wiggly. So at the moment, nothing happens because you need to change the value of the position here. Type in maybe like 20. So that's how it wiggles at the moment. Now you can also adjust the wiggling effect under this wiggly selector. At the moment, the wiggles per second is set to two. So that's two wiggles per second. If you change that to 10, so 10 wiggles per second, that's how it's gonna look like. Now I just want to leave it as 10 wiggles per second. I can also change the correlation to zero. That just means that every single letter will kind of like wiggle individually. I'm going to reduce this to maybe 10 and I can also add the rotation. If you click the arrow next to add here and then go to property and then rotation and then maybe I'll want the rotation to be 10 degree. Yeah, so that's basically just kind of like wiggling the rotation by 10 degree. Obviously that's a bit too much, so you can reduce it down to 2 degree so that it doesn't wiggle too much. Now the next one, you can also wiggle the whole object. We're gonna wiggle this star, so say you have an animation, you have objects on your screen and then you just don't have time to make fancy animation. You can just add wiggle on the position, so hit P for position and then hold alt and click on the stopwatch icon and type in wiggle i'm gonna type in 5 comma 100 so the first number is wiggles per second so five wiggles per second and then 100 is the amount of the wiggle so that's 100 pixel i've also done a tutorial in the past about expressions so you can have a watch and learn more about expressions there so it just wiggles there but sometimes you don't want it to wiggle that much. Maybe you want to just make it float. You can reduce the wiggles per second to one, for example, and then the pixel maybe to 50 and see how that looks. So that's have more like a floating effect rather than like wiggles. Another thing is that instead of using expression, if you can also use this effect. So under your effects and presets, tap in wiggle. Bring that wiggle position. All you need to do is just to change these two numbers. It's basically the same as the expressions, but instead of like tapping it down, you just have to change the number here. Maybe even I'll put the wiggle speed to 0.5 and the wiggle amount to 100 and see how that looks like. Cover more area, but it kind of like floats slower. You can also add wiggle rotation here. So if you drop that in, I just want the wiggle amount to be like 25 and see how that looks actually that rotates a lot so i'm gonna reduce it to like five so it just have like a like very subtle rotation you can also do this obviously on an image like for example if you're doing slideshows uh, what i've done in the past is making a lyric video with like a photo like a still photo in the background and then at the front is text instead of like having it still like that you can kind of like wiggle the image a little bit. So I'm just gonna drop that effect again, wiggle position. So basically just kind of like wiggles like that. And obviously when that happens, sometimes you have kind of like a gap there. What you can do is just kind of like scale it up a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that to maybe 35, just to cover that area. Now the next one is match cut. So you don't have time to create fancy transitions. What you can do is match cut. So match cut is basically just cutting two layers that has similar shape. So for example, this magnifying glass and full moon, they both are circle. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this moon to the middle. So hold control home to bring it to the middle. And in magnifying glass, I've also put the anchor point in the center of the circle, not in the center of the image, but in the center of the circle, somewhere there. I'm gonna hit control home to bring it to the middle of the screen. And then all you have to do is just kind of like match the, the scale and the position. That's about right. Once that's done, you wanna select both of the layers and cut both of the layers by hitting control shift D. And then I'm going to delete the first layer of this magnifying glass and then the second layer of full moon. 
So now what it looks like, just kind of like cuts like that. You can obviously do that as well with images. So now I have two images that have circle shapes. What you need to do is to, again, bring this image to the middle. So I'm gonna move the anchor point to kind of like about the middle of the circle and then hit control home to bring it to the middle. And then the lemon, control home as well. So that's kind of like the middle of the circle. And now I'm gonna bring the opacity down on the hot air balloon by hitting T. Just bring it up for 50 for now, just so that we can see the lemon behind it. And I'm gonna hit S for scale. I'm gonna bring it up so that the hot air balloon size is about the same as the lemon. Now that's about the same. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna hit T and bring back the opacity. And I'm gonna select both of the layers again and cut it by holding Control Shift D. And then again, delete the first hot air balloon and second lemon. So now if we play it, so that you don't lose the size and the position, I would parent one of the layer to the other, just so that when you move this, the other layer also moved. Now, obviously we have gaps over here. Uh, what you can do is either you bring the size up like that, but then losing some of the image, or you can also use this effect called motion tile. So if you type motion tile on your effects and preset, drop that onto your layer, and then basically you wanna increase the output width. So just until it covers up the composition and then you wanna hit mirror edges. But obviously you still see the lemon, so I'm gonna just like bring the size up a little bit until you don't see the lemon on the side. And then you wanna do the same with this hot air balloon. Bring the output width up until it covers the composition and then hit mirror edges. So it kind of like seamless like that now. Now the next one is dusty overlay. Now I've already done a previous tutorial on this as well, but I'm just gonna explain it to you real quick here. All you need to do is to create solid and then go to your effects and preset and find fractal noise. And basically what you wanna do with fractal noise is to bring up the contrast and then bring down the brightness until you kind of like left with a bit of like white speckles, something like that. You can also do is under transform you can scale down the fractal noise. So there's like more speckles, but smaller ones. So I'm gonna bring down the brightness a bit more. Now I wanna animate the random seed under evolution options here. So I'll click on the stopwatch icon. I'm gonna use time asterisk say 300. So that's basically just animating the fractal noise. And obviously it moves really fast. So if we change the mode back to screen, you see it there's a little bit of like white speckles. Now if you feel that's a bit too soft, then you can bring up the contrast. So you see it a bit more. The next one is probably the most obvious one is Easy Ease Keyframe. Say if I create position rotation here, I'm gonna change it back to zero and then move the start across the screen. And if I play it, it has that kind of like harsh stop at the end. I usually want to smooth it out. So select all the keyframes and hit F9. So that's easy, easy keyframes for you. And it just feels smoother, feels sleeker and more professional. The next one is slow zoom in. So say you have a title here, right? When I don't have time to kind of like animate it, I like to make it slowly zoom in. Firstly, you can scale it up. So hit S, just create keyframe at the start and at the end. And then at the end here, I'm gonna maybe bring it to 150. And then at the start, maybe bring it down to 80. So it just kind of like has that, I guess, more dramatic feel. Now that's on 2D layers and with scale. You can also do that with 3D layers. So at the moment, my layers is already set to 3D here. And all you need to do is to create camera. And then basically do the same thing. This time it's with position. So animate your position and then go to the end and basically just move the camera closer to your title. Now, the good thing with animating with 3D camera here, you can set the depth of field. So if you open your camera under camera options, see the depth of field here, it's already set to on. You don't really see the depth of field much. That's because we need to bump up the aperture here. So I'm gonna bump it up maybe to like 400. So at the moment, it kind of starts with clear and then it becomes blur. So I actually want it the other way around. We need to bring up this view layout to two views. 
so that we can see our camera position and that's your active camera so you see the light being lined over here so that's basically your focus distance i want to bring the focus distance all the way back to your layer change this focus distance here so that's basically when your composition is going to be in focus so if you bring that here so obviously it starts as blur and then i think it was about four seconds it becomes in focus if i bring it forward obviously it becomes blurry again so what i'm gonna do at four seconds here i'm gonna animate the aperture and then i'm gonna bring it maybe like to five seconds and make it zero it will start as blur and then it will become clear towards the end i'm probably gonna bring up the aperture a bit more here 400 maybe bring it to 700 so that it becomes more blur at the start so that's one way to do it but you can also use a blur effect you can look for any blur i'm gonna just use gaussian blur but you can experiment with other blurs obviously create a keyframe on the blurriness and then hit you on your layer to show the keyframe and then probably maybe go to around two seconds create another keyframe and then go back to your first keyframe and I'm gonna bring this up until it kind of like blurs like that so it kind of like reveal your title and you can add opacity as well on there just to give it kind of like more drama I'm gonna change the first opacity to zero to just kind of like dust that play around with the keyframe here the next one is to add gradient or vignette to your scene let's just add vignette first so in order to do that you just need to create a black solid so solid and then put it on top what i usually do is i just click on this shape tool and then look for ellipse tool double click on it and then it creates that mask automatically and i'm gonna change the mask to inverted i'm gonna hit f i'm gonna bring up the feather it has a uh, softer edges now i would just double click on the mask and make it bigger and then for the background, I usually would just like add a bit of gradient. I've also done a tutorial in more depth about gradient. So you can watch that to watch more about gradient. But today I'm just going to use this one effect called full color gradient. And I'm just going to change the color, probably like this blue color. So you have a gradient already and you can also animate the gradient what i usually do i just kind of like add an expression on the points and the expression is basically wiggle so i'll click on the stopwatch icon and then just type in wiggle one 500 so it's kind of like animates a little bit which is pretty cool i'm gonna put it down to 300 so that the amount of the wiggle is a bit less I'm just gonna copy this and then do the exact same one to the rest of the points so just the points not the colors and then you can also change this up a little bit so that they have a bit more variation so you can see like the colors kind of like slightly moving like that the next one is think design now just disclaimer i'm not a graphic designer i did study a little bit of design but i never really studied it in depth you can basically just google principles of design i think they have like contrast um, hierarchy colors stuff like that the principles of design will be very important in making your animation look professional and sleeker um, i guess the first thing that i want to talk about today is just to kind of like do a hierarchy especially if you do like this kind of like layout but it also applies to any kind of animation so this headline subheading and other info they're all the same size the same color the same font it just feels like it's one thing i'm gonna make the headline bigger because that's what's more important and that's what you want your audience to look at first so i'm gonna bring it up to 55 and then subheading maybe bring it down to 25 other info maybe to 15 and this is the content and content usually needs to be simpler and smaller than the rest this is already smaller but i'm gonna bring it a bit smaller again to 100 and i'm just gonna adjust the position of these three points and basically i'm gonna select all these three subheading other info and the content and then parent it to the headline just so that when i move it around everything moves with it now you can also change the subheading font weight set to semi bold and i reduce it to medium and italic and maybe i want to make the headline black and then other info can make it like medium 
and maybe even change the color to black. So that's the hierarchy. That's one thing that you need to learn. And also the next thing is legibility. So for example, you have a blue background here. You don't want your text to be like, for example, dark red. So that's gonna be hard to read, especially depending on your audience. Sometimes I have projects where the audience is much older and I have to make the text super duper legible. Contrast, color, that's basically in the principles of design. That's something that you need to read and learn and practice and it just kind of like becomes second nature to you, basically. And the last one is to add a pre-made animation. Today I'm gonna use Motion Duck by Sonduck. So if I go under Windows here and then Extension and then Motion Duck, just adding a bit more details to it to make it less boring, basically. With Motion Duck, they have a lot of like packs here, but today I think I'm gonna use this MGSP one. It has this motion graphics icon that I can just like add. So I'm gonna go to Lines and I'm gonna add one of these sparks. So I think I'm just gonna add this one. So that's basically the animation. Obviously that's way too big, so I'm gonna bring it down to maybe like 15. That comes down to principles of design again. Your title is the most important thing and all these details are just secondary. And because my title has like a scale animation, I can also parent this icon to my title just so that it kind of like scales up with it. And then if you double click on this line burst, you can actually control the colors. Let's go back to main comp and I'm gonna duplicate this line burst and just bring it maybe like to here and I'm gonna just change the size so it's a bit more variation and I'm gonna bring the second line burst just like right after the first one finish. And obviously there's a lot more icons here that you can add and also there's other packs that you can add too like for example if I wanna add a bit of like action and they have this what they call muzzle flash and also sparks again it depends on your project if it's suitable then you can definitely use it but i just want to show you what we can do so these sparks i can change the mode to screens so maybe maybe the sparks can go first after the sparks kind of ends the line burst kind of comes in obviously there's much more that you can do that's just like an example of what you can do and that's it. Those are my 10 tips on how to make your basic animation a bit more interesting without compromising much of your time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you next time.